right, welcome back to another episode of Triad Expeditions. And in this episode, we are continuing our Can-Am Maverick X3 modification series. So I have the truck uh, loaded up with the trailer. And as you can see, we got snow still on the ground here and it's uh, intermittent raining, but uh, I have a little bit of time to kill. And I thought this would be a good time to make a short video on just how we load up the trailer. So that's what this video is about. Um, I know I did quite a bit of research on how to basically tie down a side-by-side -side, and it wasn't that I was new to it. Um, I had done some research before and had bought the Canadian Super Clamp and that was not a cheap setup. Um, but that's how serious I was about it back then when we had our Commander 1000 XT. Uh, when we were heading out to Moab that I did not want that thing to come off the trailer This was in fact the same trailer uh, that we had back then and uh, it, It's a uh, it's an aluminum trailer which works out really nicely because you can obviously it doesn't corrode and everything else But you can you know do a, a really nice job of pulling it with a smaller truck so our tow vehicle just a real quick to clarify in case you hadn't seen our previous videos or just now you're um, watching our videos because of the fact of the emphasis of the Can-Am um, we have what's new to us uh, a Toyota TRD Pro and we have supercharged this uh, our FJ is supercharged and it was just uh, a world of difference and this thing has been pretty awesome with the supercharger on it so we put a Magnuson supercharger on it and uh, it really makes a big difference this will be in fact though the first time pulling the Can-Am sorry about the wind I do have a sock on there but it is a little bit windy outside today um, the overcast does make for good video though um, so this will be the first time pulling the Can-Am loaded down um, with the supercharger so we'll see how that goes I've been happy with the result though so far it actually gives you about a third more of uh, horsepower so let's look at uh, in case you hadn't noticed in the video thus far let's look at the handiwork that RC Enterprises had done for me um, it was uh, it was a, co a collaborative uh, design that we came up with um, the super clamp system that we had before was never designed for 35 inch tires in fact I think 30 inch was the max that it was rated for and I think 30s is what we had on the Commander XT and I thought that was pretty darn cool which it is pretty darn cool but these 35s are just massive and um, they're you know it was one of those things where I wanted to make sure to capture this vehicle on the trailer very well so there's a couple things going on here first off we made this cradle that we have a ratchet strap that goes over the top and then it goes in behind and that is key uh, under the tire so what that does is that forces the tire forward all right and then it's very important that when you do your ratchet straps that you have them where it has the captured link so a lot of them will have an open hook link but they'll have a captured link too so that way you don't lose your ratchet straps if for some reason it does come off the side this is really just one of a couple different ways that this vehicle is uh, held on sorry about the shaky camera work I'm actually stepping on snow and it's melting so it's actually compressing so the other thing that we have is these tusk um, holders here brackets in case you haven't seen it there's a couple different companies that do make them uh, but what they do is they basically utilize the factory shipping uh, hooks or grommets there and I've labeled each one of them uh, just because of the different lengths from the front and the back that I've customized the ratchet straps so they're not excessively long um, and that way I can just simply tie it off and and not have a bunch of um, a strap you know hanging around so you can kind of if you sneak down in there you can kind of see uh, as I'm trying to show you we put a uh, a deck ringlet there's actually a fly on the camera that's that's a sign of the times that it's 50 almost 50 degrees a day which all the flies are coming out um, so it basically pulls straight down and this will give you uh, the the ability to keep the car from bouncing up and down going down the road 
obviously it's not coming off of the vehicle because of this system up here uh, but we don't want it to basically rock back and forth because we do know that these have quite a bit of um, suspension travel and the only thing that that concerns me about this setup is I don't know why that none of the companies that I've seen and if any of them see this video or maybe you can suggest to them I, I think I will they need to make a system where this this basically has like a push-up system here uh, it could be designed better maybe I'll design it um, but basically it needs to have like where something captures the bottom of this post because if the suspension compresses enough this keyhole um, it's almost like key mod uh, can basically allow this to slip off and um, once again the toe straps or the ratchet straps that is have this uh, you know captured system but you know this could be the weak point right here where it could come off so I might end up maybe uh, making some type of system where I can run maybe something through there uh, maybe like a hitch pin uh, like one of the thinner hitch pins that would really be all they would need to do is just don't make these cutouts on the side and drill a hole and then if you have a hitch pin through there that pin would go directly across this post so um, there's another company that's like a smaller company maybe I'll get a hold of them and tell them how they can improve their design I don't mean to sound um, I don't know like uh, overconfident I guess in my opinion about designs but obviously that would be a very easy way and when I say hitch pin I mean just those little pins that that have uh, the bar that come around and meet up with it so it doesn't have to be anything super fancy sort of what you see like on trailer uh, hitches quite a bit just to keep the uh, the tongue uh, clasp from coming up alright so moving on uh, I don't want to make this video too long um, but I did want to share that here's a good example of what I'm talking about right here so this this little pin right here that just you know goes through there and then around the other side you have the little thing that just slips on there that's all they would have had to do to basically make sure that that was not going to slip off that post and um, so we've utilized those straps those posts in both in the front and in the back and uh, you can see here in the back same concern um, you know there's there's plenty of travel in these vehicles where the um, your ratchet strap could come you know unhooked and you know if you have this product obviously you could re pretty easily retrofit it also um, they make ratchet straps that actually have like a bungee effect to them um, they're not necessarily cheap um, they are pretty nice so I had actually had put them in the Amazon cart um, and we'll see if I ever see one of these come off you know definitely that's going to be um, in the future um, but I think my idea with the pen is uh, really all I'm going to have to do to, to make sure that these don't come off those posts um, all right so both the straps come back to a central location and one of the things that you know they they tell you is uh, a lot of folks will tell you you know not to load down the suspension um, or you know or rely on that because of the concerns of what I'm talking about uh, about the fact that the car will like bounce you know down the road and you know you could you could lose your ratchet straps so um, but we have an additional this is the super clamp part this is where it comes in we have an additional means that this vehicle is held down to the trailer and I do apologize because I'm kind of showing you something that's no longer valid but you could easily make like an adjustable chalk or something like that where it pushes forward um, and then you pin it uh, you know it wouldn't take much to fabricate something like that um, but this right here utilizes a rail there that's screwed in to the deck and um, and then it has an arm that comes up here and then a lever and so what you do is you slide it on there and then it has teeth and those teeth are engaged when when this is kind of pushed downward um, so this arm here um, basically gets pushed down and it's sort of like uh, a vice grip or something like that it, you know it, it cams into it so it makes it super tight the tires actually compressed a little bit and then there's teeth up here so man it would be nice if they still offered this product for folks um, I'm just glad that I was able to continue to utilize it that I did not sell it 
uh, because I'm, I'm extremely happy that this is the way that we're going to be transporting the uh, side by side. And uh, then, you know, you do have, obviously you have somewhat of a deterrent here for theft because each side gets a padlock to um, keep that lever from coming up. And there's really no way to, um, you know, roll this off here without that being uh, pulled up. So, all right. So let's talk about that just a little bit as far as theft deterrent, uh, just to kind of continue that, that idea as far as, you know, First off, you know, the super clamps are there, so that's nice. Um, we've talked about it, sorry about the wind noise once again. Uh, we've talked about it in the past with the cutoff switch, and then um, I'm actually gonna have, uh, hopefully they'll do it for me, I'm, I'm sure they will, if we have time, uh, I know they will. Uh, with the center console, if you had not seen our cutoff switch video, we have a, cut, a cutoff switch vehicle, or cutoff switch specific video on how to wire a cutoff switch on these um, vehicles you know if you if you haven't seen that check that out because that is one more thing but we're actually going to conceal um, kind of going to the concealment thing uh, we're actually going to conceal that cutoff switch with like a, a middle console cushion that will conceal it so it won't even be able to be seen um, you need battery to start these things um, it they will roll if obviously you could roll them uh, onto another trailer and steal them um, you know there's many ways that a thief will do that but one of the the second um, so sorry uh, I guess I really want to maybe try to keep track of these different deterrent methods so we have the padlocks on the back um, we have the straps you know even though those aren't locked uh, it is still something that has to be undone you're really fighting time when it comes to thieves. The more things that they have to do to actually physically remove something from your possession or take it from you, the, the better off you are. Yes, they might destroy something in the process. That is a given. Um, I've had stuff stolen from me in the past, and there's no worse feeling than, than knowing that because you just know um, your opinion of that person or of the thief is not a very good one. Um, so the more you can do to deter theft obviously you know where you park it and, and back it up to a parking spot or back to a pole or something like that that's always a good thing um, and then just you know pick pick your surroundings pick your environment wisely you know look look at what's around the, the motel that you're picking when you're on the road that type of stuff so another way is the steering wheel so the steering wheel can be removed very easily it's a quick dis disconnect steering wheel so we got that going on and then the last way that I'm going to tell you guys about, there's actually another, I'm not going to tell you about it, but there's another way um, that here has the B&M shifter has a lockout. So this cannot be taken out of park. Um, so the transmission is going to continue to be in park and it's not, not going to allow you to um, roll this off of the trailer. Um, so it's really just a big heavy, very heavy uh, vehicle that is sitting here without a steering wheel intact, without a transmission that can be shift, with no electric, with straps all over it, and also locks um, on a ratcheting system on the back. So I hope you guys have maybe thought about that. Um, you know, th the thing about it is, is you hate to ask people that have had their machines stolen like what steps that they had taken to keep that from happening um, because it's kind of like just salt in the wound type thing so you know it's it's um, you, but you'd kind of like to learn from it like you know and who knows if people will actually admit that uh, what they did or they didn't did do because they are a little bit embarrassed it but it, it's like any time that you see that on Facebook or any of the other posts where you know please be on the lookout for you know a yellow can am uh, last scene um, you know in in whatever state you know Utah or whatever and uh, you just hate it because you know that um, they they may end up you know losing quite a bit of money even though even if they had insurance and then the worst case scenario is when folks don't have insurance at all so alrighty well I know I kinda rambled on there I we're at uh, 14 and a half minutes and uh, I did want to share with you some of these details and things to consider about transporting your vehicle safely things that you can pretty easily fabricate and also how to keep your vehicle secure while it is stored on the trailer and going down the road so 
All right, well, I appreciate everybody watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you would like to see future videos. We're, uh, we're averaging about two videos a week at this point in time. I know that will taper off as we start hitting the road here later. Uh, but uh, you know, definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified of any of the videos that we do have coming out, and we will have many, many more on the way. All right, everyone take care and be safe.